awesome, awesome voice stuff ever since. Um, I want to get a quick show of hands from and who has been here to one of these before. Yep, a couple of people. I do see some familiar faces. Awesome. Cool beans. So for those of you who have been here before, bear with us. I know that we have gone over the stuff before, but for all the new faces, it's all super important stuff. Today, we're going to be having a bunch of different volunteers on stage for 10 minutes each. I'm going to set a little bit of a timer. And so if you would like to work on your voice, we'll have the opportunity for that. Um, but we're also going to go over a little bit about safety, about general voice theory, so that everybody can kind of understand what is going on with this stuff and what the heck we are talking about when I say, oh, the resonance needs to be brighter or the vocal weight's too heavy. Let's talk about it. So with safety, the number one thing is that nothing should hurt at all, okay? If you have any sort of pain when you're practicing, when you're using your voice, or if you just like afterwards, it's not a good sign. We need to listen to our bodies throughout this. If you do have any pain, please do stop what you're doing, give it a break for the day, maybe come back to it the next day after you've had a bit of a rest. And if that pain keeps on happening, it's a sign that you're doing something that isn't quite right. Okay. If that does happen consistently, it can be a great idea to stop practice and have a consultation with myself or Savvy or another voice teacher that can help you to see what might be going wrong. Okie doke. Throughout this process, we want to really listen to our body and we don't want to force anything. I know that it can be tempting that if we don't feel able to get up to a high enough pitch that we just want to Ah, like push it out and get really loud, but we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we're going nice and gentle throughout all of this. It's a nice exploration, softly, 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 into what our body can do and what are the sounds that we can produce. Okay. Um, as well as that, we don't want to hold on to too much tension. We don't want to be too tight. We don't want to be squeezing as we try and make all these new different sounds with our voice. So if you do notice that you are like really tense, maybe like, you know, in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your shoulders even, try and be as relaxed, relaxed, relaxed as you can. Relaxation will help your overall vocal health in the long run, and it's a good way to get better results. Often, when we are really going into the right sort of area with our voice, um, it can feel like nothing at all. Like resonance, and we start to get good at moving it from dark to bright, at first, it might feel like really quite effortful. It might be squeezing, it might be straining, no good. But what we want is to have it be a really nice, gentle movement that feels natural as anything else that we do with our bodies. Okie doke. So no pain, no pushing, no squeezing, no forcing it. Okay. This is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. Okay. There have been people that have seen me for like two lessons and got it, but they're <laughs> very rare. Very, very rare. Often we can expect to be working on our voice for months if not years. And, you know, with my voice, I started teaching after I found my voice and I kept on getting she hairs consistently and I felt happy with it. Um, but I still found that after my first year of teaching into my second year and now third, that my voice has gotten easier to use, that I kind of lived in it more and have been exposed to more situations and different kind of edge cases where I can live in my voice more naturally and explore it. So, it's a long process. Give yourself love and kindness um, throughout this process because it can be hard. Um, I know that dysphoria really, really sucks. And if at any point you're asked to do an exercise on stage or in the crowd that you are uncomfortable with, either let me know or just don't do the exercise. Okay, I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable or gross or dysphoric as a result of what we do here today. So some other things for safety. If you have any sort of unintended change to the quality or the feeling or function of your voice, Again, stop what you're doing and let somebody who is in the know know. Some things can be included here. If your voice is like really awesome all of a sudden, like you've been to a concert. Um, if you find that your voice is like really shaky. If you find that your voice keeps on cracking <laughs> where it didn't before. If your voice feels grainy or different, or if it just feels like uncomfortable to use all of a sudden, all of these things can be signs of something not going to plan. So be on the lookout for these warning signs. As well, if you can't go as high or as low, as loud or as quiet, any of those different signs there, stop what you're doing and let a vocal coach know is the best thing to do. None of my students so far have reported any sort of vocal health issues and touch wood. I don't want anyone here to be the first, okie doke. Now, there are some lifestyle things that will really help you to be able to achieve your voice goals easier and to be able to um, explore your voice in a more safe manner. 
Number one is alcohol. We want to reduce alcohol intake. If there's any regular drinkers out there or binge drinkers, try and bring that down a bit if you can. It'll be helpful in the long run. As well, if you are kind of a little bit worse for wear after too many bottles of wine, you know, give the time to don't practice. <laughs> give yourself time to rest and recuperate. If you are ill, if you have like a tickly throat, if you have a cough, um, all these things can lead to quite a lot of inflammation within the voice. And again, this is something that we want to avoid. So if you're sick, don't practice and don't volunteer either. Even though I know it's tempting, um, give yourself the time off. Smoking and vaping, um, cigarettes, cannabis, anything in between, um, we want to minimize that as well because that does directly dehydrate and irritate the vocal folds, which can make things a lot harder. I used to smoke quite a lot. Um, I used to smoke anywhere between like 10 and 15 um, cigarettes a day back in the day. And um, it's a lot easier after I stopped doing that. So if you can quit, awesome. It is New Year. It's a great time to do it. Some other things as well, if you're on spiro, um, spironolactone as an antiandrogen, that can be really quite dehydrating and it's important to make sure that you're hydrated. This applies for everyone. We all want to be hydrated when we're using our voice and it can be one of the last tissues in the body to get hydrated. So it's a great idea if you drink a pint of water about an hour before looking to practice or looking to um, explore voice a little bit further. Some other things that can help, a nice warm cup of tea can physically warm everything up and it can be a great solution. And as well, just warming up generally can be really, really fantastic for you to be able to get better results. So the TLDR, if anything hurts, stop. If anything feels a bit funky, stop. Um, keep hydrated, avoid cigarettes, avoid alcohol, avoid caffeine as well if you can. I know that these are all the fun things, but let's try and minimize them as best as we can. Okie doke. Now, the final thing is if you've got any history of vocal injury or any current vocal injury, um, it's a good idea to consult with a professional before practicing. So do bear that in mind as well. Okie doke. Before we move on, I'd love to check with anybody. Does anybody have any questions with regards to safety? If you're on desktop, just slam that space bar so you jump and down. Um, otherwise, if you're in VR, just raise up your hand and I will answer you. Hello, Neven. Do you have a safety question? What's your question? No, sorry. I was just like, I'm not on desktop normally, so I'm like making sure I like, get none of the controls. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Just testing the button. No problem. Any questions, please do shout out now. Iris, hi. What's your question? Hi. Um, so uh, regarding like the current vocal injury, um, I am I think I'm slowly starting to get over it. But like yesterday, mm. I felt fine and I haven't coughed in like a 24 hour, 48 hour period. And like I want to make sure that like I don't know I started using my voice a little bit yesterday and I ca I started coughing a little bit and I was like oh this is not mm. happening so I want at some point or another like I would cough so much to the point where I it was a little bit of like a tiny bit nothing to be concerned about but a tiny bit of blood in my cough uh, mm. so uh, is that something that's like permanent damage or is that like something that I can recover from and will I be able to to use the voice again given that fact mm -hmm. yeah thank you for your question so i need to preface this by saying that i'm not a medical professional i can't give any medical advice and so i can't really be able to diagnose what's happened and to say what would be the best course of action it may be great to talk to a doctor about this stuff here and um, to be able just to double check to make sure that you're safe and sound Whenever we're coughing a lot, it can be really traumatic on the vocal folds and a little bit of blood is still concerning. So the best thing that you can do, I think, is keep yourself plenty of rest. I would say that a good rule of thumb is to wait at least two weeks after your symptoms subside so that you can go back to baseline. Um, so I'd recommend to make an appointment with your doctor just to double check. Um, we can see a lot of signs of vocal injury um, by taking a camera and going through the nose and taking a look at what's happening in there. That can be really, really helpful. But um, I'd say, yeah, definitely take your time with it. I'd say at least two weeks, go very carefully. And if you are concerned about further damage, um, it's a good idea to make an appointment. They may refer you to an ENT, an ear, nose and throat doctor or a laryngologist to be able to take a look at your concerns. Um, a lot of voice injuries are very treatable, but it depends on exactly what is happening with you. And without really spending some time with you and um, also without the camera, it's difficult to stay for sure. So give yourself plenty of time and make an appointment if you're still seeing symptoms or you're concerned there, I'd say, Iris. Sorry, I can't help you further with that. I hope that helps. No, you're fine. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Any questions as well? Any other questions with regards to safety? For Wheat, hello. Do you have a question? Yes, I've got one from Twitch. Uh, Saber Tooth awesome. Yep. Asks, if uh, they suffer from chronic tonsillitis, what can they do to help with the inflammation? Oof, that's a rough one. I'm sorry you're going through that. Chronic tonsillitis, what can you do to help? Um, again, I can't give proper medical advice. The best thing to do is to ask your doctor. Um, sometimes the best route is a tonsillectomy to be able to get rid of that problem once and for all. But if there's a lot of pain, a lot of inflammation, it can really impact your voice goals. Um, best thing to do is to take a look with the doctor to see if there's any underlying cause for that chronic tonsillitis um, or any other sort of interventions that can be taken to be able to resolve that. Um, I know that out of experience that some things that can help can be like salt water goggles, um, making sure that your oral hygiene is on point, but I'm sure that with it being a big problem, um, you've tried those things, but take a look with your doctor. It's definitely something that's treatable and to look out for. Um, Ramia, hello, loads of questions today. What's your safety question? No, <laughs> not to worry. So any other safety questions, please do jump up. No, I think we're all good. Awesome. Oh, there's one last one. Hi, at the back, I go by user. What's your question? Yeah, um, I've been out of practice for a bit, uh, like about two to three weeks. Uh, how fast do you reckon I should get back into it? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So if you're out of practice, the good thing is I don't tend to find that there's a lot of backsliding that happens. Um, it really depends as to where you were before, but I'd say it's always really good to start off with some nice gentle exercises, start off with some SOVTs and just feel your way around. Um, since you've already been doing practice, you'll know where you would be in previously. And I feel like it's important to listen to your body and to carefully test the waters out to get back to where you are and then go for it. Um, with regards to the amount of time, it really depends, and it depends on how far along you were. Um, you know, I, I know that for myself, I got really, really ill back in September. I had this like awful viral pneumonia. It was dreadful. I had such a long cough, and um, after all my symptoms subsided and I had a bit of a rest, I was able to get straight back there. Um, but your mileage may vary, so take it careful, take it slow, start off with the SOVTEs and the basic exercises, then go for 10 minutes of conversation and see how you feel. Um, but nine times out of 10, even after a break, you'll be fine. So don't worry too much about it. Okay. Awesome. Okie doke. So let's dive on into the next little bit here. I want to talk to you all briefly about the voice theory, all this sort of stuff that's going on with the voice. There are three main variables that we are taking a look at here. Um, before we go into these, is there, is there anybody here that's like brand new to trans voice training, like has never done any sort of stuff? Cool loads of us awesome and who is like had done some reading or maybe attended some of these lectures before and has kind of a decent idea uh-huh quite a few and who would you say that you're advanced you're looking for the last little tweaks you've been using your voice for a long time a couple of us great so a lot of newbies today awesome well we'll go into this stuff so uh-huh there's nine months there's what sorry there's nine months count actually nine months counts oh, it's us. yeah <laughs> Devo. cool Okie doke. So um, with regards to trans voice training, there's three main things that we're taking a look at here. Um, one of them is pitch, all about how high or how low the voice is. There's a really good way that you can start to measure this. If you're new to all of this stuff, you've got no musical background and someone says, F sharp three, what the heck is that? A great thing to do is to download the voice tools app. It's freely available on both iOS and Android, non-spawn, of course, but um, it's a really good app. It's got a lot of different tools in there. One of the tools is a tone generator, and you're going to be able to get all the different notes that you need to be able to navigate your way around your range. Typically speaking, um, there's been a bunch of different studies about where cis women's voices lie with pitch, and the average pitch seems to be around about a G3 or a G sharp 3 anywhere between like about 195 hertz to 210 hertz. That's where the majority of cis women's voices lie. Of course, there is definitely a um, standard distribution curve. There are voices that are lower, there are voices that are higher, but there's a huge crossover in pitch between voices that would get a he, him or a she, her on the phone. I say on the phone just because it's like a good kind of analogy without any sort of physical or visible feedback, right? Um, just the sound by itself is what I mean. So when we're looking at pitch, we have to be mindful of a few different things. Our average pitch, where we're spending most of our time, um, what highs we go to, how flexible and easy it is for us to reach up above. 
But the main thing, I think, arguably, one of the main things we want to be careful of is the pitch floor, how low we go. This is one of the more tricky things to get really down with your voice training, but we want to avoid making pitches around about a C sharp three, C three around this kind of like 130 hertz range. We want to start to back off on those so that as I go down and pitch, ah, I start to kind of like fry out and make it a little bit trickier. Okay, this note here, ah, that's the C sharp three. That's about as low as we want to go. Okie doke. So let's have a little go at trying to match this note all together. I'm going to play this note on my little machine here. On the count of three, I want you all to try and match me with a nice, soft, ah, uh, sound. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and all together, ah, uh, beautiful. Well done. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Let's try exploring that um, average pitch, okay? Um, let's try going a little bit higher. We're going to go up to this kind of um, F3. We're going to take it in stages. Again, I'd like everybody to match me here. On the count of three, here we go. As the note, here we go. Three, two, one, and uh... Absolutely lovely. Good job. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Let's go up to this average pitch up here at this G3. Here we go. A little bit harder. Uh, okay, on the count of three, I want everyone to match me up here again. That's what it'll sound like. And on three, two, one. Uh... Awesome. <laughs> Great work. So what I really love about that as well is that you're all really pretty accurate. And that last note, it sounded all pretty easy to you. Um, Pop to Khan, can you do me a favor? Can you be hand, um, just careful with your push to talk? There's a lot of background noise coming off you. Thank you so much. So the average note, it seemed to be really, really pretty easy for you all. Um, everyone raise your hand. Who found that note pretty okay to use? It felt like not too hard, not a push. Yeah, a bunch of you. And who felt it was a bit tricky, like you had to really focus on it? And I was like, mm, this isn't the easiest thing in the world. Definitely a couple of us. Awesome. So pitch is one of these things where, as I say, there's a big overlap between guys and gals' voices. But a really good way that you can work with this is with S-O-V-T-E's. They're a great set of exercises. S-O-V-T-E stands for semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Semi-occluded meaning partially covered. Vocal tract is everything from our voice box to our lips and exercise because it's an exercise. All it is is a bunch of different sounds that we can make to be able to explore pitch in a safe and sustainable manner. Okay. The way that these work are by applying a little bit of back pressure onto our system and that helps us to find a more optimal balance of the breath coming up from our lungs and how our vocal folds are physically coming together. Now, there's a bunch of info of this on this online, and you can also find out loads of info on these SOVTEs over at um, the first lecture that we've got on the video on demand. There's loads of stuff there, but I want to try out one of these with you. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm sure you'll all get the hang of it. What we want to do is to start off by just making a big old fishy face, okay, pushing your lips out. Then I'm going to ask you all to wet your lips and to go ahead and blow a steady stream of air. It's going to sound like this. I want you all to practice off mic, and then we'll do it all together. All righty. So I'm going to count you all down. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... Excellent. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, now we're going to try something a little bit more tricky. We are going to try and keep that sound going, but we're also going to put a little bit of a hum in there as well. The note that we're going to hum on is right here. Mm. So the whole thing will sound like this. All right, I think you've got this. Here we go. Count of three and three, two, one. Oh. 
Awesome. Woo. <laughs> Perfect. There are a bunch of ways that we can use these exercises. A really good place to start is by going for 10 second long intervals. So what I would do is I'd get my app here. I'd start at maybe a comfortable note. Let's go down for the C3 and I'd get a timer and I'd go big old breath. <sighs> And that's 10 seconds. It feels like a long time when you're doing it, but it's a really good way to start to develop control, consistency, and efficiency with your voice. Um, one thing that you want to be looking out for is I don't want anybody to push or to get too loud when we're doing this. What we don't want is to really <laughs> put the beans into it. We want it to be nice and soft, okay? So this next little exercise we're going to do together is something a little bit different. This is called a fifth. A fifth is a musical interval. It's just a way that we can explore our range in a more dynamic manner. Okie doke. Still using this SOVTE, we're going to go down from a C3, this kind of floor of where we want to be, up to a G3, this kind of cis woman average. Now, if we have a listen to this, this is what it'll sound like all together. <laughs> Alrighty, let's give this a go together. So on the count of three, we're going to slowly go from that C3 up to the G3 and back down. Nice and soft as we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> work everyone perfect 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 so what we can do i know that a lot of you might not have this voice tools app yet but it's really good to download um the way that we find these fifths is that we start on a note like that c3 then we go up one and a long one to the right if that doesn't make sense now it'll make sense when you look at the app but it's really really handy we can then try going a little bit higher to the c sharp three g3 <laughs> and so on. By doing these exercises for about five to 10 minutes a day, it's a really awesome way for us to not only warm up our voice, but to develop control and coordination to get these higher pitches moving. The highest that I would recommend that anyone go would be around about a B3 or a C4. But the main rule is that everyone's going to be different with this process here. And wherever things start to feel like they're getting a little bit tricky, like you have to kind of squeeze or to push the sound. For example, if I went up here, you can feel that I'm leaning into it a little bit more. Um, we want to keep it nice and soft and controlled. If you're finding that your voice is cracking, if you're finding that like it's kind of tricky, go a couple of notes below and you'll get there eventually, I promise. Okie doke. So moving on from pitch, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the next thing. Now, there are two more main variables that I'm looking at in transvox training. Does anybody know what they might be? If you can raise your hand, if you know what the next one is, it's going to be either beginning with a W or beginning with an R. Does anybody have the answer? Ooh, we're all very shy all of a sudden. Hello, Azraeli. Sorry, I can see your name there. Azraeli, hi. What's your answer? Hi. What's the next thing? Um, next one should probably be vocal weight. Absolutely. Vocal weight. Ding, 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 ding. Absolutely. So vocal weight is all about the amount of umph, the amount of drive, the amount of buzziness within the voice. Okie doke. For example, uh, this would be talking with quite a light and soft vocal weight. Uh, this would be talking with a heavier vocal weight. It's buzzy. <laughs> okay. And I know that a lot of us have this ingredient kind of missing from our voice. Um, so much so that it's kind of gotten a name in the trans voice community of like the trans femme buzz, right? If we kind of feel like we're sounding a little bit like this, vocal weight is likely to be the issue. Okay. There's a really awesome way that we can start to get an intuitive feeling for this stuff. And I do this all the time. I love it. But I want you all to imagine a really cute cat, a really cute dog in your hands. It is absolutely adorable. Big old eyes looking at you. And I want you all to give me on the count of three, a really nice, really soft. Uh, that's, that's the wrong sound. <laughs> oh my God, I do it so often, I've forgotten. A really nice, soft. Ah, uh, okie doke. <laughs> Bloopers. Here we go on the count of three, a really nice, soft. Ah, uh, three, two, one, and ah. Uh, beautiful. Yes, it's soft. It's so lovely. That's more where we want to have our voice. So, you know, if I try and get this into my voice and read that, the birch canoe. Ah, 
the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. It's very soft. That's where we want to be, okay? But on the opposite of this, if we have a really heavy vocal weight, a lot of umph and drive in the voice, a great way that we can imagine it is this cat. It's so lovely, but it's just thrown up all over us and it's grim. There are chunks. It's terrible. I want you all on the count of three to give me a really nice ah okay here we go three two one and ah please yes <laughs> absolutely now you can probably feel it's way buzzy you feel these kind of vibrations a little bit more you might feel it in your throat in your face all this sort of stuff um the important thing about vibrations is a lot of people are told make the vibrations happen at your lips or your nose or like the front of your head vibrations will be different for everybody don't chase the vibrations chase the sound notice what the vibrations might feel like for sure but listen to the sound number one okie doke so ah light vocal weight ah heavy vocal weight okie doke so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read this sentence on the frontier the birch canoe and on one of these words i'm going to increase my vocal weight and i'm going to ask someone from the crowd to tell me which word it was okie doke i'm going to keep everything else the same the pitch the resonance so you can really hear it have a listen the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks any ideas again have a listen which word's getting heavy the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. I see a lot of hands over here. Aurora Wolf, what word was it? Uh, was slid? Absolutely, it was slid. Perfect. So this is something that a lot of us have. Um, the first step with vocal weight is just getting to understand it, getting to try and keep it nice and consistently soft. The next step is to try and see, okay, we're trying to keep it soft, but maybe there's certain words where it's just getting too heavy, certain sounds. Maybe after you've been talking to a friend for five minutes, we start to get a little bit more of this buzz back in. Totally normal, totally natural, but we wanna try and minimize that and keep soft, soft, soft as we can. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna move on to our third and final quality here. I'd say it's one of the most difficult to kind of get our heads around. And um, does anybody want, no, uh, I can't talk. <laughs> does anybody know what that third and final quality is? So Balsam, hello, what do you think it might be? assume means it's going to be resonance. You're absolutely right. Spot on. Resonance is absolutely correct. So resonance is all about the amount of size and space within our vocal tract. I'm going to put a little bit of a diagram on here. This is the power source filter model. It's kind of a way to think about where things are happening in the voice. And just to check, can everybody see that okay? Can you all raise your hands or jump on the spot if you can see this diagram? Yes, perfect, good, okay. So we have down here the power. This is our breath. Without the breath, we don't have our voice, of course. Often, if we are struggling to make higher notes, it might well be that we aren't um, supplying enough airflow. Feminine voices require a little bit more airflow than we're used to. When we're talking down here. So nice and uh, aware of the breath, making sure that we've got plenty to keep this machine going. Now we've talked about two things so far, the pitch and the vocal weight. Both of these are happening within the sound source, within our vocal folds, okay? Pitch is all about the amount of tension on the vocal folds like guitar strings, and vocal weight is about how they are coming together, okay? Now finally, we've got this filter, and filter is where all of this resonance stuff is occurring, okie doke. Basically, when someone is exposed to testosterone, a few things happen. The vocal folds get longer and thicker, meaning that the voice gets lower. When we have a lower voice, we need a heavier vocal weight to keep it going and to get that moving. And as well, this filter space, this will actually get a little bit longer and a little bit wider, okay? As we take a look at this filter in a bit more detail, we've got our area number one or resonance chamber one, R1. It's just an area of the throat. We are gonna try and make that smaller the smaller the space, the brighter the sound is going to be, and the bigger the space, the darker. So if I keep my pitch the same, if I go here to this G3, and then if I just say the word hello, I'm going to start to make the space bigger. Hello, 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 hello. And you could hear that there's a lot more bass, it was a lot more muddy, a lot more mask, a lot less femme. But if we go the other way, hello, 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 then we can start to control this space here. R1 is the main one, but we also have our R2 and our R3, the mouth space and the lips that give us a lot of shaping too. 
Let's try a bit of an exercise to see if we can get a really nice big R1 space, a really dark sound. What I want you all to do is to try and give me your biggest, most kind of um, authentic... Oh, really big yawn. <laughs> okay, so on the count of three, I'm going to ask you all to really just have a big old yawn at me. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Perfect. So I want you all to do this one more time, but first I want you to find your larynx, okay? Adam's apple, Madam's apple, that little pointy bit in our throat. Everyone has one. And um, what we're going to do is feel it, and then I want you all to have that yawn on the count of three. And I want you to tell me, does it go up or does it go down? Here we go. Three, two, one, and... Oh, hi everybody, hi. Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. Can some brave soul tell me, um, was it going up or down? Please raise your hand. Hello, Zimio. Hi, was it going up or down? Down. It was going down. Down, absolutely going correct. Down. <laughs> Perfect. So when we yawn, we get to a really dark position. When we do the opposite of yawn, raising that all up, we can get to a brighter position. And there's a really good exercise to do this with. So the one thing to know about resonance is that it affects all sounds in our system. It affects the voice, it affects our yawns, it affects our breathing even. If I was to make two different breaths, have a listen to these, okay? Or, which one sounded more masculine, the first one or the second one? Second one. Second one, absolutely spot on. So we can change our breath. If we feminize our breath, if we feminize our whisper by raising up this larynx, we can feminize the voice as well. There's a great exercise called the big dog, small dog exercise that is perfect for this. What we're all gonna do is try and make an ah sound with a yawn, and it's gonna sound like this. <sighs> Okay, on the count of three, I want you all to get into that big yawny position and give me three ahs. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... Good. I hear a few of you using your voice. That's cheating. I want it all to be whisper. Here we go one more time. No voice this time. Three, two, one, and... Good work. Awesome. So this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to take that big and dark sound and we're going to scale it upwards in three different steps. We're going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. This can take some practice. If you don't get it first time, don't worry. But what we're looking for is this. And again, try this off mic, okay? This is what we're looking for. Okay. Cool, and we're going to try this all together. Three, two, one, and... Well done, perfect. I'm hearing some lovely bright whispers in the crowd. Great job. A couple of things to look out for. We've talked about one of them, no voice. We also don't want any kind of rumbly sounds like, <clears throat> no good, <laughs> okay? And also we don't want to push too hard at all. We want it to be nice and gentle. We can then make it a little bit more complicated. We can say the word hello. Have a listen to this one. Am I going from dark to bright or bright to dark? Have a listen. Hello. 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 <laughs> now let's raise your hand. Yeah, Luke Coyd, was I going from bright to dark or dark to bright there? You were going from bright to dark. Absolutely correct. Okay, let's try this all together. We're going to go dark to bright this time though. So big and yawny. And then we're going to go here we go. Three, two, one, and. Perfect. Well done. Woo. <laughs> Excellent. So we've covered these three main things. Okay, we've got pitch, we've got weight, and we've got resonance. The first step in this process is just learning about these, finding out more about them and exploring them, trying to get your weight brighter, your pitch higher and more comfortable, and your weight lovely and soft. Then the next step is to bring this all together. So if we start at a low pitch, if I go to my old voice, for example. Yeah, so the weight's heavy, the resonance is dark, and the pitch is really low. Awesome. So what we're going to do is raise the pitch up. Hello, hello. You can tell it still doesn't sound right. It's too heavy. So I'm going to 
soften it out and then hello 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 move the larynx up and then we get there vocal feminization largely is control of these three main things and the better that you get with them the better that you'll be with your voice as well so i spent a lot of time talking about this and i want to make sure that we get to volunteers i won't have too much time for questions today but we do have something in the works for a bit of a q a session but i would love it if um you would like to volunteer to be able to see where you are in your voice journey and to be able to see how we can get over any sort of roadblocks of where you might be please do jump up and down raise your hand i'm going to pick someone at random here and um, we're gonna go over the side with Echo Lux, please. If everyone could give Echo Lux a really big round of applause. Woo! <laughs> Come on up. It's not easy coming up here. This lot takes a lot of nerve. So Welcome, 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 Echo. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a 10 second timer. I'm also gonna take a little bit of a drink of water because I am absolutely parched. Be two ticks. Okay, okay. So, let's start that timer. Alrighty, Echo. So you tell me a little bit about um, how have things been with trans voice training? Whereabouts are you and what do you feel that you can improve? Huh, okay. So, I've been in voice training for probably, probably, or, uh, I mean, okay, so it's kind of hard to explain. Mm -hmm. Um... <sighs> I've been voice training for a long time. Voice training in air quotes. Um, mm. It's I I've gotten a lot of different information from different sources and haven't been sure mm -hmm. sort of what to go with. And so mm. um, I think what ended up happening is just kind of a uh, like a slack. I slacked off a little bit, I think. Fair, fair, fair. Absolutely. Yeah, it's no worries. <laughs> it happens. And so um, where do you feel that you are at the minute with regards to like pitch resonance and weight? What feels like your kryptonite currently? Mm, I'd say probably weight. Um, mm. So let me see. This is sort of where I generally have it when I'm, you know, putting a little bit of effort into it um mm. so i can feel the weight of it mm. and mm -hmm. uh i could move my larynx up a little bit but then it puts a little bit of strain mm. into my voice and i'm you know i'm trying to avoid that right yeah um, of course 100 percent. yeah awesome um, cool cool so... cool Yeah. So some things that I hear, um, I really love a lot about your inflection. This pattern of where you're moving with your speech, the ups and downs are sublime, you know, um, super duper fun. The bit of like vocal fry that's in your voice as well. Lovely. Now, with regards to what I think is the main thing that should budge, um, it's very coupled with uh, weight. But I think the main thing that we should be looking at is pitch at the minute. Um, what I feel is, though, when we're coming down, you know, we are getting down to some of these lows. Right. And I feel as though that like there is actually quite a bit of softness down here. And there's this lovely fry. It's lovely. I love a lot of it, but we need to move it up. You know, I think that is our most pressing thing. So um, I want to see how your pitch matching is generally. We're going to go through just a couple of different notes. And I just want to see how it's sounding when you get there too. So I want you to take a nice soft ah uh, sound. And we're going to glide from a comfortably low note up to this note here, first of all. Have a listen and see if you can match me. Uh, okay, try that for me. Uh, good, good. I noticed you get a little bit heavier as you went up. Try and keep it soft, soft, soft mm. as you go up. Almost getting softer as you get higher. Uh, Lovely matching though. Give it another go. Uh, that's more like it. Good. And I can hear this brighter resonance, not only in your breath, but in your voice. Like as you finish, uh, it was really nice. Okay. So I want to see if we can go a little bit further. We're going to go up to here next. Uh, one, two, three. And I want you to count one, two, three at the top when you get there. That note again is right there. Take it away when you're ready. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three. Now that's sounding actually really, really good. 
that's sounding really good to me. Um, how ethical is that? I know it might take a lot of mental focus, but physically, does that feel pretty easy? It sounds easy. Uh, it, let me try it again. Mm. Uh, Here it is. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's, it's, it's got the feeling of mm. something that I don't normally do, but it isn't that mm -hmm. hard. Yeah, I get that feeling that it's novel, but it's not difficult. But I'll tell you why, Echo. Like, the sound of it, the weight is perfect up there, and the resonance is really nice and bright, too. Oh God, you have so a much. lovely sweet spot up there. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so I just want to really encourage you to do more of this and for that to be your bread and butter for the voice, okay? So we're going to go over to do a couple of these different phrases. We're going to do the same reset, gliding up, getting soft. But we're going to go ahead and go monotone first just to control it and feel it, mm. okay? Careful not to get yourself too thick. As we go through, it's gonna sound like uh, one, two, three. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Okay, take it away when you're ready. Uh, the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Beautiful. Good. That's feeling good. Let's do the same with glue the sheet. Ah, uh, glue the sheet to the dark blue background. Okay. Ah, uh, glue the sheet to the dark blue background. Lovely. Now this next one, we're going to do two. We're going to do the first one with the blend up. Then we're going to go in for the second one right after it. It's going to sound like, ah, uh, it's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Don't be afraid to breathe in. You'll need to. <laughs> okay, take it away. <laughs> uh, oh, it's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Awesome, 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 awesome. Beautiful work. Now, this for me is where your new home for your voice should be. If we go a little bit lower, sure, but I want to just keep on developing this. Sure. Now, your resonance when you first did this was brighter than what you are demonstrating currently. Um, I feel as though what I want to do next is keep us there, but really tune that resonance in. And I heard it especially on these ooh sounds, okay? I'm going to take that word glue, and what I want to do is go. Ah, glue, 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 and see if you can get that lovely increase in resonance. Get those lips out of the way. Have a big old smile as you go into glue. So again, mm. ah, glue, glue, glue. That's what I'm looking for. Ah, uh, glue. Wait, do it again. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, for sure. Glue, glue, glue. Okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that is it, exactly. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. Glue, glue, glue. But then we're going to go glue the sheet to the dark blue background. And you're going to be really careful on blue to keep that lovely brightness. So again, all together. Ah, glue, 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 glue. Yes. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. Almost take your time with it. Go a little bit slower and try and make every sound as bright and as forward feeling as you can. One more time. Glue, uh, glue, 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 glue the sheet to the dark blue background. That's sounding fantastic. We're going to do that one more time, but this time we're going to move the pitch around. And I want you to visualize this pitch going mm. up rather than down. Have a listen to this. Ah, glue, 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 glue the sheets to the dark blue background. Mmm. Okay. Ah, glue, 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 glue the sheet to the dark blue background. Oh, I did it while I'm done. <laughs> I got the old flat yet. <laughs> one more time. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. Ah, it all fell apart because those circuits mm. of where your pitch should be, they all yeah. came out and it's like, bring the voice back down. So we're going to take yeah. it in steps again. Okay, okay, here we go. Ah, glue, 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 glue the sheets to the dark blue background. Sheet to the dark blue background. Ah, glue, glue, glue the sheet to the dark, uh, glue the sheet to the dark blue background. <laughs> So we found a little bit of a, 
a cognitive dissonance block, right? Where you yeah. want to do something, but you can't. <laughs> so this right. is super common. What we want to do is try and get through hmm. that. And to do that, to bust into this new area of pitch, I just want you to go glue, glue, glue. And we're just going to blend it up. Oh, okay. So okay. dark to bright and then just go, ah, okay. Uh -huh. Glue, glue. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. ah, I think starting I on that okay. note, though. Mm. Yes. Mm. Glue, glue, glue. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Uh oh. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I'm there, can you just give now. me an? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Can you give me an? Ah. 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 But start on that glue mm. note. Glue. Ah. Glue. Ah. Oh, mm. ah. interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, okay. It is, isn't it? Okay, let's go for glue and let's stretch glue out. We're going to go glue, glue, glue. Only up. Glue, mm. glue. <laughs> Do the lowest mm -hmm. one again. Mm. Glue. Mm. Mm. Glue. Mm. Ah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so this is where your stumbling block is so um to talk about this a little bit more that's us pretty much just up to time thank you so much i want to kind of summarize this for everyone here and for yourself too so awesome work um the main thing that i found though is that when we really focused you got such a fantastic result i can tell that you've been practicing but also this kind of slacking that you're saying to you because we found yeah. something that feels comfy but isn't all the way mm. there now of course you know i encourage all of us to have voices wherever they feel comfy whatever we want if you want to get more of that femininity more of that she her on the phone all that stuff this is what we need to do we need to get you used to speaking on or around that g3 okie doke i also feel as though that there's a reluctance a kind of scaredness of going past that note so maybe some sovte mm -hmm. just to get really familiar of going up to that c4 and opening that up and just feeling more okay with it would be really helpful um some other exercises too, going on ahead and starting off reading all of these things, trying to be as bright, bright, bright as you can, keeping monotone. The birch canoe, the, the glue, the sheet, exactly as we did, with an attention on keeping that pitch consistent, flat, and every sound really nice and bright. Then we take baby steps. We go, glue the sheet to the dark blue background, mm. tiny little steps around the note, and you'll start to feel it more. Um, I am so excited about the sound that you're able to get up on stage and oh, just keep going. Honestly, be brave, be hungry for it, and you'll get it. Okay. <laughs> a really good job. Oh, I got a big round of so applause much. for Echo, please. Woo! <laughs> really good one. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So what we saw there was um, a really big improvement in my eyes. I mean, I felt like when we got Echo to be where we wanted it, all of a sudden, <laughs> everything just gelled together. And the resonance, it's really, really good. It's really powerful. But it's also one of these things where we need to have quite close attention to it to begin with. As we started to go from glue, 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 I talked about the importance of moving the lips out of the way, talking about this sort of R3 stuff, right? So if we have the lips two forwards, we often do this on the W sounds, on O sounds, on U sounds, glue, glue, glue. If you get those out of the way, it can really brighten things up quite a bit. Careful attention to that is fantastic. When we start to notice as well that our body is doing things automatically, largely without our consent, like when Echo's voice is kind of start to go a little bit further down south with the pitch, um, focus on that, spend time on that, observe that. Whenever we find a problem or a friction point with voice, that is likely what exactly we should be practicing. Um, that is exactly what we should be practicing. Great work. Okay, so I've got time for one more as well. If anybody would like to volunteer, I'm going to try and squeeze you in as much as I can. I'm going to go for someone on this side. And... Uh, yeah, Athena, I'm going to go for you, please. We can give Athena a really big round of applause, please. Woo! <laughs> Come on up. I'm so sorry for people that we can't get to. Um, we will be here again in two weeks' time, but I also have some plans in the works to try and get more people seen too. So stick with us at the Academy. We've got some things in the plan. So um, welcome, 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 Athena. Let me go ahead and start this timer. Um, here we go. So if you can tell me a little bit about yourself, how voice has been going, I'd love to hear it. Your time starts now.
Uh, hi. Um, sorry. Hello. <laughs> it's my first time here. Now I get mm -hmm. picked for the stage. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been voice training. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been voice training for like um, a couple of months. I'm in speech therapy. Um, nice. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to do some stuff like at home too. Trying to play with resonance a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I still have like this buzziness that I like not only hear but like feel in my chest kind of. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i feel like that's something i need to work on still uh mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> pretty much good it. awesome so how long have you been seeing a speech therapist for um let me think uh about 20 times nice yeah. okay cool and what are the main things that you've been focusing on recently um we have just done like um we try to like practice me speeching in public because <laughs> I have like a little bit mm -hmm. of a mental barrier speaking to new people. Totally. Um, yeah. I keep falling back in like old patterns because I'm scared and I'm, mm. I go back to like deep voice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it's more like a <laughs> um, mental barrier focus currently. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. I definitely know how that is. Main thing then to get you through this, if we look that way, ignore there's a crowd behind you. <laughs> it's all okay. <laughs> So let's give this a little bit of a go. What I would love to hear, Athena, is like for you to just get in the zone, for you to kind of put all of your training in place, and for you to read those first two lines with everything you've learned so far. Okay, whenever you're ready to start, take it away. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks, blew the sheet to the dark blue background. Well done. Awesome. What I'm noticing is with this focus, your pitch floor is a lot more disciplined, you know, really, really nice. I feel like you are going as low. The pitch was actually pretty lovely too. Um, I wanted to do this mm -hmm. to you as well. We're going to go, it's easy to tell. And these days, both of those lines, three and four, can you do that again for me, please? Again, in the zone and then go for it. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Well done. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days, these days, these days, these days. There's nothing wrong with your pitch, you know, in those examples, mm -hmm. I think. Um, the main thing for me is resonance and weight, you know, starting to get those two things coupled together. Um, we're going to go for the word tell and well. That's where I feel like it came down most significantly. And sometimes it's really nice just to spotlight one word, integrate it back into the phrase. And we often find that the whole phrase gets brighter as a result. Um, I want to see how you are with these whisper exercises. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this word, well, and we're going to go from dark to bright. But again, I want to just hear how this sounds for you. Have a listen and see if you can mimic me. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Well done. Good. Awesome. Let's go a little bit quicker. Well done. Let's go. Wow, wow, whoa, 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 wow, 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 Up and down. So starting high, bringing it down and going back up to bright. <laughs> okay. Well done, well done. So some little quirks that I've found is really well done. The mechanism and the way in which you're doing this is absolutely correct, but it feels as though there's a little bit of unfamiliarity with some of the brighter sounds. Um, at the minute, I want you to really focus on resonance, be hungry, hungry, hungry for those brighter sounds. That is the main thing that I think you can get the most bang for your buck on. Um, currently, when you did that, the reason why I went up and down and you know down and up and all this stuff is really to test your agility, to see if you start really bright, can you get there immediately? What I found is that you started kind of, um, you know, if we draw kind of a rough chart here, we started kind of like high, but not the most. We went down to dark and then we went up to, early. what I found is that you started and even brighter resonance. So it felt to me as though what we really want to do is make this area here super accessible, just boom, boom, boom. We get there first time, every time. We need to be able to do that in our exercises to be able to fully have control of that dynamically in speech, especially when our kind of like ah factor comes in <laughs> when there's an audience. So I would say that one main thing that you can practice is trying to live up in that super bright zone and to be able just to get there. Record yourself when you go from wow, 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 and that wow is something that you should be able just to wow, 
right out the gate without having to work your way up to it. Um, these exercises, these whisper exercises, don't do them like for more than five minutes at a time at all, but them sparingly throughout your day. Um, when we're whispering a lot, we can really irritate our voice. So just be careful and mindful of that. Okay. Um, let's try doing this in voice. We're going to go to a pitch. I want you to match me here. And then we're going to try and go nice and bright, but also soft. Can you give me a nice old ah, uh, uh... please? Beautiful. Okay, have a listen to this. We're going to do the same thing with well. We're going to go well, 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 well. So dark to bright on well. When you're ready, Athena, give it a go. Well, 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 well. well. Ah, cool. Good stuff. I noticed a little something here Um, to mimic it. Well, 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 well. What we had is more of the sound coming out of the nose being pumped up into that nasal cavity. Okay. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's something that I want you to have absolute control over. When we put nose, we put nose, <laughs> when we put air up into our nose, what happens is the sound is shaped by the space of that nasal cavity and we get that Ah, that nasally sort of sound, we might feel more buzzing kind of up in this area. Um, I felt a little bit of that coming through. What I want you to try and do for me this time, Athena, when you keep on this well sound, is to focus that air, focus on the air, leaving your mouth. Imagine it, visualize it, see where the air is going, and kind of breathe softly out of the mouth as you get okay. up there. So again, whoa, well, well, well. Imagine a ball of energy all coming out of your mouth rather than the nose and take it away when you're ready. Well, 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 well. That's better. Good, good, good. Let's try and put this back in the phrase. We're going to start off with depth of a well. Okay, just that bit. Uh, which one? Oh, so we're going to depth of a well. Oh, just okay. these last three words. Don't worry about the start of it. We're going to just go mm -hmm. depth of a well. Coming out of the mouth, nice and bright. Depth of a well. Good. Okay. Now I want you to go like this. Well, well, well. That brightening exercise. Then depth of a well at the end. And we're going to see if there's a difference. Okay. So dark to bright on well. Then depth of a well. Nice and bright, keeping everything consistent. Take it away when you're ready, Athena. Well, well, well. Depth of a well. Uh -huh. Well done. Definitely more consistent. I felt that the attempt previously, we weren't quite as bright as we were when we took it up in steps. A little bit of that nose came back in. I don't know if you felt that back on depth. It kind of mm -hmm. came through the nose a yeah, little bit more. Something to look out for. Awesome. I'm glad you noticed it. Again, not an inherently bad thing, but I think that we want to get a more rounded sound overall. Really, really good work. We're going to try this again with moving around the pitch this time. We're going to go well, well. Well, depth of a well. Okay, take it away. Well, 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 depth of a well. Good, good, good. Now we're going to do two of these depths of a wells. We're going to go for one that's a little bit heavier and one that's a little bit softer. The whole thing is going to be like mm -hmm. this. Well, 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 depth of a well. Depth of a well. Second one's super soft. Okay, take it away. Well, 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 depth of a well, depth of a well. Ah, interesting. When I asked you to soften out there and have that kind of softer vocal weight, what happened was that you did absolutely get softer, but also your resonance globally got darker. From depth to well, the whole thing went doo -doo 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 -doo, a little bit. It feels to me as though there's a little bit of an association with bright sounds and heavier vocal weights, as well as putting that sound up through the nose. Often when we are looking to start to get grounded with resonance and feel, okay, what does my body feel like for this? We often go for vibrations and a lot of people end up with this very forward, kind of nasal buzz to the brightness and associate that as one little package. What I think you really need to do is be mindful, keep soft, 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 keep the airflow balanced out of the mouth and still keep bright. Try that little exercise that we did at the end, that's our time, of going up in brightness, moving it around, one heavy, one 
light with your vocal weight and see if you keep that resonance the same. Um, as well as that, keep up with your whisper exercises, try and get to that really bright sound immediately, it's multiple times throughout the day. Wow. Okay, boom, touch it there. A little bit more accuracy and familiarity will have you sounding fantastic, Athena. But really good job with the rest of your voice. I can hear all your hard work, keep up with it. Um, any questions to be able to help with all that or does that all make sense? Um, I think I'm just going to try it out. <laughs> Maybe I have a question Perfect. next time. <laughs> awesome. So and much. feel free as well. No problem. Feel free to look back at the VOD once it's uploaded as well. You can hear all of this. And I hope that that feedback lands as well. And you can maybe start to recognize these things as you hear them. But beautiful work. And if I can get a big old round of applause for Athena, please. Woo! <laughs> Excellent work. Really nicely done. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So normally I'd wrap up today with a Q&A session, but I'm afraid we are completely out of time. In fact, I'm a little bit over time. So um, I want to thank you all so, so, so much for coming. Um, we will be doing some more, um, well, some different things in the future. Keep an eye out for the announcements is all I'll say, because um, I really want to get more questions answered um, from all of you. Yeah, more regularly too. So thank you all so much for being with me this Sunday. Um, have yourself an absolutely lovely one, and I will see you in two weeks' time. Um, we're also going to be from all of you. Thursday and Friday by Jess, we'll have a um, full voice gender workshop by Savvy on Sunday, but I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much indeed. Give some love for Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Have a lovely one. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thanks all. Bye.